My name is Sonja Liena, coming from SAP. Um, I'm the VP from the ABAP Development Tools Department, working in other cross projects as well. It's really a pleasure to be here. I didn't ex expect it to see as many people today, and it's really hard to follow Mike, but I hope you, you're patient with me. Um, I think that's, no, it's not working. Okay. Today, I'm going to tell you that um, Eclipse is already mind blowing because I want to talk about challenge accepted, innovations around us, and our vision for mind blowing IDEs. And Eclipse is already mind blowing. So you could say, okay, next keynote, please, <laughs> because the job is done. Um, but I'm serious. Eclipse is awesome, mind blowing. Let me prove that to you through a short video. Applicate indicate shoot deploy. The navigation has confirmed that the parachute has deployed and we are seeing significant deceleration in the velocity. Our current velocity is 440 meters per second at an altitude of about 12 kilometers from the surface of Mars. We have started our constant velocity accordion, which means we are conducting the sky crane about to conduct the sky crane maneuver. Sky crane maneuver has started. Tango Delta. Touchdown confirmed. Perseverance safely on the surface of Mars, ready to begin seeking the sands of past life. Yeah, that is Mars. And we are waiting to see who will conquer the challenge of getting there first. But you know what? Eclipse already achieved this before anyone else, because Eclipse is already there. Did you know that um, Mars Rover's Curiosity missions were developed, the, the missions were developed using the Eclipse IDE? It gives me really goosebumps to work with such great te technology. Um, still, short disclaimer here. I couldn't find a video of Mars Rover Curiosity's landing, so I used Perseverance instead, but hope you are not too mad with me today. Yeah, do you remember your first contact with a computer? I remember, remember it really clearly, it was Christmas actually, and one of my brothers got a Schneider, an Armstrad computer. It came by with a very green monitor, very intuitive UI, at least if you were willing to use the command line and learn some basic. Yeah, it didn't have a GUI yet. Let us talk about current innovations instead. Bill Gates just recently wrote in one of his blog posts that he saw only two demonstrations of revolutionary technology during his lifetime. First, the GUI, there it is, and Gen AI. Gen AI is really the next big thing. And the real game changer is not the AI, it's that the AI is now able to create its own content, text, images, and coding. And I really like how Jeff Crumble, or Crumb, is it, from IBM, IBM describes it. It's like discover, infer, and reason, just like a human. And I was thinking, wouldn't it be mind-blowing if we could combine these qualities and integrate them in our IDE? So, Gen AI already changed the way how we work. And in my opinion, Gen AI will change the work, uh, way how people will deal with business software, and especially how they build business software. And especially for our topic today, I think it's really necessary to look in the past and see how game changes are born and made. Let's Google it. It's quite a common term nowadays. With 83.49 global market rank, Google is used by almost every human on Earth with internet access. Compared to other search engines, it was really um, established very late, like uh, in 1998 by Larry Page. That means almost three years later than its competitors. Did you ever ask yourself why on Earth you thought it would be a good idea to compete with already successful search engines? In my opinion, they, Google was and is so successful because they did some quite good yeah, decisions because they had just better technology in the background and with that better search results. And secondly, they came with a better design, clean, yeah, you know Google. 
Another success story is um, Apple. Okay, sorry, <laughs> not open source, but still. Um, yeah, when, when um, Steve Jobs re-entered the company, you can clearly see what happened to the product um, strategy for them. They reduced their product catalog and only delivered four items. And I think that was the most important decision they could make in the history because they are just genius regarding their product strategy. What can we learn from these kind of examples? For me, it leads to two guiding principles. First, we need to concentrate on the real stuff. We need to focus. Because in my position, I get many ideas, many great ideas. And you, you, say, you need to say no to many ideas coming by, even they are great, and say yes to the real game-changing one. And uh, yeah, I would say the challenge we are facing with technology and innovation is to differentiate between good ideas and the game-changing ones. And the second part is simplicity. If you look into our IDE, we need to simplify. Simplify the user flows to reduce everything which can distract the user to do the real task. And we already have great technology. And with that, that a very successful IDE, the otherwise we wouldn't be on Mars, right? And Steve Jobs, um, he said once that success is a result from design and technology. In my opinion, we are in a very strong position here, the Eclipse community, with years of experience and a solid community. But is our IDE already mind-blowing? And what is mind-blowing, by the way? And um, I, I would say it depends on the definition, right? Let's start with the obvious. We need a visual refresh, period. Yeah, we, we are done. That's already enough to do. And the IDE working group is already on it. Um, today we have this session here, just a short teaser on the right. Um, we need flat icons, cleaner UIs, less information at once. And if, if people are talking about their affection for other IDEs, IntelliJ, Visual Studio Code, it's most probably because of the UI and not the technology. The UI is the window to the technology underneath, and my vision is to show powerful technology through mind-blowing IDE and an excellent user experience. And if we, as Eclipse community, want to be in the pole position, we need to start and lead with technology. So, if Gen AI is the next big thing, what does Gen AI bring to the developer universe? I am convinced that we need to rethink how the development flow will look like in the future and adapt the technology accordingly. There will be IDEs in the future. I know that there are some discussions going on. I believe there will be IDEs, no question. But we need to lead this field, or other ones might do instead. At SAP, we have a huge Eclipse IDE developer user group for ABAP development. And you might ask yourself, OK, what is ABAP? I only see four people who, who might know this here today. So ABAP stands um, for two things. First, it's a core foundation to build our ERP software, S4. Um, I like to refer as, um, as the heart of SAP, or the very core. It's like our running system includes everything you need, like database connection, memory management, security, connectivity, and everything. It's uh, really the running system, the heart. And secondly, ABAP stands for the programming language itself. It goes back, has a long history to SAP's early days, and has done a tremendous evolution since then. So that is how the development environment for ABAP looked like many years back. Green like the Schneider, now you know why I mentioned it. And these days are really long over. Nowadays, we offer two different development environments. That is the SAP GUI, and now coming to the real stuff, the ABAP development tools for Eclipse. ABAP development tools for Eclipse are used to build mission-critical software like sales, finance, supply chain, to build SAP's ERP S4. That is yeah, big software, so to say. In addition to that, 
They are used by our customers and partners as well to extend their, their ERP itself and do their custom development. ADT for Eclipse is our flagship to build state-of-the-art ABAP development. And we already um, had our 10 years um, anniversary this year, so we had some, yeah, some time to celebrate this. In 2022, we launched ABAP Cloud as new ABAP development model. And that means um, it includes everything you need to build cloud-ready business software, like upgrade stability. And um, it, it is actually our key driver for one of the Gen AI use cases as well, I see, for ABAP development. Actually, there are many interesting Gen AI use cases for ABAP. I'm not, uh, I, I'm not telling you more because we, we, we have this TechEd coming, but I can share some insight about just one of them. So our customer system landscape is, in most of the cases, very complex, hybrid setup with on-premise systems as well as cloud systems. And um, in the on-premise systems, the custom code from our customers are done directly in the ERP itself. So this leads to SAP and custom coding, which is highly interwoven, not manageable at all. Since ABAP Cloud, as I said, can be used now in on-premise as well, it is easing the path to migrate on-premise systems to cloud systems. Some facts. Yeah, numbers are good, Mike. 100,000 SAP ERP systems are based on ABAP worldwide. Around 5 million ABAP developers, registered ABAP developers globally. Around 80% of all business transactions are touching an SAP system, and with that, ABAP. Around 20,000 ABAP objects per ERP system. So these are already some huge numbers. Another number, 56 million. Does anyone know who, what this number represents? No? <laughs> Actually, it's the distance between Mars and Earth. Yeah, that's the topic today. I have another bigger number, 25 trillion. Anyone, I guess? Okay, I just told you, we are talking about 100,000 SAP systems based on ABAP with millions of ABAP code lines. And they all need to be migrated from on-premise to cloud systems. You could even multiply this with N, with all the custom code which is done in, in the ERP system, and then you get the number for ABAP Gen AI. So even if we would ignore the huge potential Gen AI brings, we, the Eclipse community, not SAP, we, we all in this room. Even if you ignore this, um, we have a lot, a lot of homework to do. Like our customers telling us like the user experience, installation, performance, upgrade. And yes, we need to work on this feedback as a community as well as SAP, as uh, my team is on it. Um, but still we need to keep the focus on our vision for the IDE. And don't get me wrong here, it's not AI, AI saving the future, it's a combination of all the mentioned challenges. And now, how can we create mind-blowing IDEs? That's a tough question. To be honest, I don't know. Um, but I have a thesis in mind, and I would like to invite you to discuss, discuss about it during this conference, during the next days. So I try to explain it to you. My vision there is that we should start by putting the persona and the result in the center and then start discussing about what the IDE should bring. Since Gen AI will change the development flow as well as tasks are done by a developer, this is no no-brainer. If, for example, the developer wants to build a test case and is using Gen AI for it, what would he do with the outcome at all? Um, there are other examples as well, but to understand what IDE is needed, we really should 
look at the result, what is the product we would like to deliver, and then what tools do we need? Do we need a developer? Do we need an AI to do the job? Okay, that is a Google-style picture. Imagine how prompt engineering could look, change the overall ID appearance. Would it be beneficial to start with a very simplified UI, almost empty window? I like to refer ABAP development tools for Eclipse as the window to the ABAP technology world, and we should really rethink what to show to the developers from the technology underneath. So is this a future? To lead with mind-blowing technology doesn't mean to copy from concurrent product. It means creating something new, something no one else has thought of before. And in my opinion, as the Eclipse community, we can and should discover the overall IDE market, but still creating a new vision and discover new fields. No, no one else does. So our exceptional strength is this community. Thousands of ideas, thousands of yeah, contributions. And we should just bundle these contributions, this potential, and then create an IDE no one else has thought of before and would be possible. So if we follow all of this, will we be successful? Yes, we'll be. I believe in that. But again, there's one missing ingredient. The first step of innovation is always to have a clear vision. And I know it's yeah, maybe tough to come up with a shared vision in a community. But what did we just learn from Google and Apple? We need visionary leaders to come up with great visions, gather co the community, and then execute on it. My vision for mind-blowing IDEs actually is that we build a tool which is leading, leading in its area a tool which is made for developers to increase their efficiency in factors times n, no one else thought would be possible. And we need to consider that there are new ways to solve problems. We need ca um, people like Kathleen Johnson who already are there in their minds. There's a movie, Hidden Figures, and it's telling the true story about three impressive women writing history at NASA. They were true hidden figures. And yeah, at the, at the end of the movie, they were not able, NASA were not able to bring men to the moon. They were still struggling actually to do all the calculations to bring the astronauts back home safely. And the director is asking Catherine at the very end, do you think we can get to the moon? And her answer is so impressive. Yes, sir, we are already there. And I hope you are already there in your mind as well, that you have this vision and that you already achieved this vision. Because Eclipse can score in this game, and I'm really proud to be, I'm really proud to be part of this community. So if Eclipse is already on Mars, what else can we achieve? We are all in it together, so just let's write history as one community and deliver mind-blowing IDEs for the future to come. I wish you a wonderful time here at EclipseCon 2023. Thank you very much.